Today I wanted to make a video about uh, processing times, more specifically for spousal sponsorships. I get a lot of uh, inquiries and a lot of clients uh, with respect to spousal sponsorship applications and the most common question is how long is the process going to take? Um, I would say that since last year, since the government actually made a commitment to process applications for spousal sponsorship faster uh, in less than a year, I actually do find that that is true and that's happening. Although the government um, sometimes takes policy decisions and sends out instructions that applications will process, let's say in 12 months, there's always a disclaimer or a notice that it may take longer and as lawyers we're often very careful uh, when we advise clients not to tell them the government said 12 months or the website says 12 months so it's going to take 12 months um, but surprisingly and luckily I find that the applications that I have filed in the last year or so are processing quite quickly for almost all of them uh, whether it's inland or overseas obviously inland has often um, taken much longer and it is, I do find that it is taking a little bit longer than what the government has said. Uh, but for the overseas process, um, I find that it's, it's actually going really well for most applications. I would say that a lot of the files that I have submitted have processed in either five months, six months, or eight months, nine months, um, or just about 12 months. Uh, and this is really good news because People that do submit spousal sponsorship are, are, are couples and they're often separated or sometimes the applicant uh, or the sponsor, they cannot visit each other. Uh, so this is a really great commitment uh, from the government and looks like they have uh, put some resources there to make applications um, process faster. Uh, now having said that, if your application is a little bit more complicated, um, then it might take longer, but even then I do find that some of my files that have a little bit of complexity are actually processing quite quickly. Now even though I'm doing this video, things could change, things can always change. Uh, you might be looking at this video uh, when I made the video, um, and this is what's kind of happening uh, in my office at least, uh, but you might be watching this video maybe in six months or a year from now and maybe things have completely shifted. Um, it's Unfortunately, immigration is in Canada, it's quite unpredictable when it comes to processing times. Um, you could be filing your application uh, maybe in a year from now, and then it might very well take 14 months or 16 months or 20 months, even though um, the processing time on the website and the government does say that it, it will take 12 months or less. So my recommendation is always to be um, to expect the unexpected, to hope for the best, meaning that it will process very fast, but always be prepared for the worst, which is kind of uh, the, a long time until an application is finalized. Uh, hopefully not, hopefully it will be going like this um, because it's better for everyone involved. Um, but also my other recommendation is, obviously there are ways to submit an application that's going to ensure that it gets processed faster. So submitting a complete application, not forgetting any forms that's on the document checklist, either the document checklist, um, which is the main one, but also the specific one for the country specific document checklist, making sure that you complete every single line, every single box that's on the forms and making sure that there's signatures on the forms. It might sound very silly, but there's a lot of people that forget to sign the forms. Um, it's a mistake that I've done in my life and other, you know, certain applications or something. I have to submit something and I, I, I just do it fast and I forget. Um, but immigration is not able to process an application if you have not uh, put your signature in the signature box. So that's very, very important. Uh, the document checklist is very um, clear as to what are the mandatory documents. So for example, you have to have submit, you know, your marriage certificate if you're married. If you don't put your, your marriage certificate, then either your application is going to be returned or in worst cases, um, it could be refused or, or for sure it will be delayed because they're going to ask for it and then you have to send it and then it goes in the mail room and then it stays there and then the officer finds it or maybe misplaces it and then you have to send it again. So th these little things can, it re can really add up uh, a couple of days, a couple of weeks and sometimes a couple of months. So make sure you properly read the document checklist and you make sure that you have everything. So you have to kind of review everything many, many times. If you're doing it by yourself, you don't have a lawyer, you can do it by yourself, but just make sure that everything is there and you kind of cross check everything maybe four or five times 
you and your spouse together or maybe with a friend or somebody that you can you say I've prepared this can you just kind of take a look do you think you know do you see that everything is there that's going to be very important another thing would be to make sure that you have all of your right contact information because once immigration starts processing your application they're going to correspond with you because after a few weeks, after a few months, there's other documents that need to be submitted, information has to be updated, maybe something is missing. Later on, you might want to have to submit police records or a medical examination. Um, the right of permanent residence fee might be requested if you haven't paid it. So they correspond with you um, usually by email if that's the, um, that's the way that um, immigration is going to correspond with you, let's say if you don't have a lawyer. Um, so it's important that the email be correct and also your address be correct because sometimes immigration most of the time lately I find that they correspond by email but sometimes they will send a letter in the mail <clears throat> so if you don't have your right address or if you've moved then you might not get the letter and then it's going to um, delay everything and then sometimes if you don't get the correspondence um, and you don't meet the deadline of the, the document that they want or the information they want, then your application can be delayed or refused, uh, especially because immigration always gives, most of the time they do give deadlines of 30 days or 90 days, um, or maybe sometimes more, sometimes a bit less. Sometimes it's you have to submit this within seven days. Um, and so the time, it's very important that you're on top of that or your lawyer is on top of that because uh, you don't want your application to be jeopardized because of that. So. These are just a couple of things um, just to tell you that if, if, if you prepare your application this way, then the process is going to be smoother and there's better chances that it, it's not guaranteed that it will be faster than what the posted time is or what the average time is, but definitely it will make the process easier and smoother and there are good chances that it will be just a little bit faster, uh, which is going to make you and your partner uh, much happier because you want to get reunited and, and start your life in Canada. Thank you for watching.